Let every man or woman here, if you never hear me again, remember this. If you wish to be great at all, you must begin where you are and with what you are. He who would be great anywhere must be first great in his own Philadelphia. Those words were spoken by our school's founder, Russell Conwell, over a century ago. And I don't know if they can ring any more true than they ring today. He who would be great anywhere must first be great in his own Philadelphia. This is you. It ain't going nowhere. Trust what I tell you, I'm going to push you like crazy and we're going to win together. Turn up! All day! Power! All day! M-B-D! All day! Table set! Let's eat! There's a new man in charge of taking Temple football to greater heights. That man is Matt Rule. And if that name sounds familiar, it's because Rule's association with Temple started long before the day he was introduced as the new head coach. Ace, Joe, ace, 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 ace. Shoot right, clamp five, shoot right, clamp five, shoot right, clamp five, guys. Deuce, 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 deuce. If I put you in, you're in for four reps unless I sub someone else, okay? Parth will go in when I put him in. You go in, you go in. You guys are rotating with each other. If you're hurt, then he goes in. The 38-year-old Rule spent six seasons at Temple in a myriad of coaching roles, everything from the defensive line to offensive coordinator. 2012 was a year away, spent in the NFL, working on Tom Coughlin's staff as an assistant offensive line coach. But when the Temple job became available, Rule jumped at the opportunity to return to the place he grew to think of as home. I love Temple, I love living in Temple, you know, in Philadelphia, and, and I, more importantly, and you can live in a lot of cities, you can live in a lot of great places, but I, re I really enjoy these kids, you know, um, I enjoy the, the, the kids we get, I enjoy where we get them from, you know, I grew up in New York City, I grew up in Pennsylvania, uh, you know, we recruit most of our kids from New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, D.C., Maryland, uh, you know, we're kind of all the same, and, and um, I just enjoy the mission of the university and the mission of this program and, and what we bring to, what we bring to the, you know, the university as a whole. Rule was not the only one who desired to see his return to North Broad. The measure of a man is the imprint he leaves on others. And if it's any indication, the dozens of messages of support from current and former players to the administration proved why this was the man for the job. We know that he is a Temple guy and that he wants to be here. We know he's a great coach. We all respect him. We all, uh, we all respect him from a coaching standpoint, a recruiting standpoint, and as a person first and foremost. I certainly appreciated it. Uh, those are people whose opinions I care about uh, because, you know, they're my guys. They're guys I've coached. They're guys I've worked with and bled with and sweated with. I think it, you know, hopefully gives credence to the fact that if you coach guys really hard, while they might not like you when you're there, uh, if you're if your priorities are in the right place, if you care about where they're going to be in five or six years, hopefully when you're gone, they'll look back and say, now I understand why. If you're only gone a year, there will be plenty of players on the team who will remember the way you operate. And if you ask the members of this team, they'll tell you Rule is a player's coach. I got no rhythm. Just took his But make no mistake, being a player's coach doesn't mean you lack for intensity. Hey, Coyer, you better step up. Time out, coach. Send him here, get another tail back in. We don't run out of bounds at Temple, you understand that? We don't run out of bounds. Bernard Pierce, listen to me, no, no, you can do this all you want. Bernard Pierce was out here every day, he spun back and ran down the sideline, you understand that? Matt Brown threw the guy and ran down the sideline. We do not run out of bounds at Temple. 
the biggest thing for me is I just try to be as honest as I can. Um, so when I see it, I say it. When I'm wrong, I say I was wrong. And, uh, you know, I think the biggest thing for me is, I mean, I want to have fun and enjoy guys. I also want to chase them down and scream at them to run faster when they're not running hard enough. But eventually, as they get used to me, they know that it's always coming from the right place. It's always coming to get them to play better. Getting his team to play better is the primary goal before the season begins. But a close second would be working to solidify the Owls' placement on the map of major college football in America. And that job began early for Rule, whose first major day on campus wasn't on campus at all, but rather on a three-city tour to discuss the future of Temple football. My name is Mark Ingram and I want to welcome you here to the Pyramid Club. So like me, uh, if you love football and that's why you're here today, there are four seasons in life. There's uh, football season, recruiting season, spring ball, and then deep, dark depression. <laughs> and so we're, we're here to celebrate recruiting all day. We're going across the state of Pennsylvania. We're going up to Scranton. We're going up to New York. Please help welcome Matt Moon. I just want to say one thing about uh, uh, Temple, about kind of how we recruit. And as our kids walk across Temple University, it's not just a, it's not just a school, it's not just a dorm, it's not just a football program. It's whatever you want it to be, and that's why it's so awesome to come here and see people that work at Temple, that went to school at Temple, because they made the most out of this university. Well, I think, you know, I think that, uh, you know, we're proud to have 10 kids from on our, you know, on this class from Pennsylvania. And we were able to go out to, uh, to Pittsburgh for the first time and, and, and land four kids from Pittsburgh and Meadville. So we will always recruit Pennsylvania as hard as we possibly can. And there's great schools in Pennsylvania, but if they want to come to the city and they want to come to where there's opportunity and come to the fourth largest media market, they see that in Philadelphia and at Temple. Uh, this will be a really important class. It'll be this class in two years that are the sophomores are really the backbone uh, of the team moving forward. So well, I'm proud to say that at the end of this recruiting class, seven or eight of those kids that were committed, that have been committed a long time, had got ACC or beat Big Ten offers down the stretch and stayed true to us, stayed true to Temple. And, and we were also able to go steal a couple that, uh, that we're proud to be in a conversation with. So uh, thank you guys for coming. And this, was, uh, this is a class we're really proud of. Thank you. As a guy that grew up in New York City, it's really exciting for me to be here. Really, this is what, to me, Temple's all about. Uh, Temple's about opportunity. And, um, you know, we offered an opportunity for a lot of guys to come play here. And, and, and a lot of young men said, you know what, this is exactly where I want to be. Uh, just have a tremendous amount of respect for what they did, the decision they made. And I think you're going to see great days ahead with these guys here. Thank you very much. Our program is built around a couple of things. You know, we want to we want to win championships. Uh, you know, we want to we want to get our education, and, and and I don't just mean get our degree. We want to get educated. We want to you know contribute to the campus community. Um, we want to impact the community around us. You know, we want, we're proud of the things we've done out in the community. Uh, we want to represent and respect Temple. Uh, I, I want us people to look at us and say that's what that's what Temple's all about. I, I want to develop pro players. Uh, not everyone can play in the pros, but we can sure as heck try to get guys good enough to go play in the pros so they're ready. And then finally, you know, I want to have fun. I mean, I want to coach like crazy and be an intense madman on the field, but I want them to enjoy that. You know what I mean? I want them to enjoy the energy and the juice that the coaches bring, not just me, but all of us, and know that, hey, we're, we're only there for them. And when you do all those things, I think it works out in the end. What's in here? You know what's in here? You got a safety coming in here. You got linebackers coming in here. You got, if you just stay here and turn it in, let them make the tackle. Sometimes it's not your job to make the tackle. Sometimes it's your job just to give it up for the team, be a team player. Paul Palmer has spent his life with football. It's allowed me to 
get a college education. It's allowed me to travel the world because of football. And, I, you know, it's funny. Whenever I talk to Coach Arians or whenever I talk to Spencer Prescott, I always tell him thank you because they're the only Division I school that offered me a scholarship. And Coach Arians trusted Coach Prescott. Prescott saw me. He said, I like him. Let's get him. And Arians just took his word for it. And, and, they, and I tell them all the time, they saved my life because I don't know what I would have been doing. Go, go, tuck the ball! And when you've grown so accustomed to spending your time around the game, it never leaves you. That's why the Temple Hall of Fame running back now spends his free time here, on the sidelines. Oh, get outside! What are we peeking for? As a volunteer high school football coach in Haddon Heights, New Jersey. Honest to God, I love these kids. I get a lot of respect from these kids. I get a lot of love and respect from these parents. And the kids that don't even play football, the kids that are at the school and what have you, they, I get a lot of respect. I get notes after the football season from some of the parents that are some of the nicest things that like people could say to people. The Palmer, Palmer, touchdown on a third and six. They ran the handoff instead of the pass, and Palmer, his second touchdown of the game. Palmer has a lot of knowledge to share. He is perhaps the greatest player in Temple football history, and runs like these were commonplace in a career as storied as they come. Durability, great speed, and he, he just continued to get better game after game, year after year. Harry Donahue has watched a lot of Temple football over the years. Here at Cherry and White festivities, and joining me is out of uniform Paul Palmer. But what the longtime radio play-by-play -play broadcaster remembers above all else is Palmer's ability to be consistently great, no matter who stood in his way. I'd like to make first team all East for the fourth time, um, all American in, in probably the Heisman. <laughs> I'd like to get the Heisman. And this is Lee Salt on the option pick. Paul Palmer was running with it midfield. Cuts it back and gets down to the BYU 44. Boo Boo Palmer is his nickname. Back in those days, you know, Temple was an independent and they were playing teams like Alabama and Georgia and Florida and Florida State, and it didn't make a difference who the opponent was. Paul Palmer, you knew, was going to get his 150, 200 yards and uh, two or three touchdowns. Performances like those were what the Cherry and White came to expect from number six, who was another guy not heavily recruited out of high school. But Palmer was motivated by more than revenge. He wanted to make a life for himself, and football was his way to do that. So he worked hard to turn 1983 to 1986 into four years he will never forget. The first aspect is always there. I'm going to show them. I'm going to show them. And you look forward to playing against some of the teams that didn't offer you, didn't think you were good enough for them. But after a while, it just gets to the point where you want to do well for yourself and you want to do well for your teammates and you just simply want to do well for your family. Getting revenge and paying people back, if you just take care of being a good teammate, being a good ball player, um, all that stuff kind of takes care of itself. But I did it for my family, I did it for my teammates, and I did it for my school. 1986 is a season that will forever live in Temple football lore. Palmer finished his senior year with more than 1,800 yards rushing and 2,600 all-purpose yards, both of which led the nation and set Palmer on his way to being named a unanimous All-American. It also granted him an invitation to New York City and a seat as a finalist for the Heisman Trophy. With Paul, he got the numbers against those types of teams. I mean, he played a national schedule, and he did not just well, he did fantastic. And it went all the way to New York City, all the way to the Heisman selection, and he finished second. And it's just, when you look back on it, maybe one of the most singular biggest achievements for Temple football in the last 35, 40 years. You might think finishing as the runner-up in the Heisman vote would be a moment to relive. But for Palmer, the moment that sticks out in his mind was from the game where all the Heisman buzz began. My junior year at Penn State, I had uh, 206 yards, and that was what started the whole Heisman thing. I remember running a touchdown 
And from the time I was a kid, I always felt like I was going to get caught. Palmer gets outside. The 30, 20, Palmer the 10. I never felt as though I, I was fast enough, so I always just ran, and I ran as fast as I could. And I remember just running and almost feeling like I'm running for my life, almost panting. You know what I mean? Like, ha, ha, ha. And I'm trying to get there. I'm trying to get there. And at the last minute, I just dove. Like the last, you know, four or five yards, I just dove. Palmer gets outside. The 30, 20, Palmer the 10. Palmer, touchdown Temple. What a run by Paul Palmer. 30 yards and a touchdown. I didn't hear any cheering. I didn't hear anything. It was just, all I could hear was like myself breathing, you know? And then once I hit the end zone, the place went crazy. And then shortly after the place went crazy, it went quiet again. It sucked the air right out of the whole place. And that's, that's probably the Penn State game and that run are definitely moments that I remember, that I'll always remember, because I always felt like, oh my God, they're gonna catch me. Palmer went on to be a first round pick and play for three teams in the NFL. But wherever he's gone, he's always kept Temple close to his heart. And when he got an opportunity to return this season, as the team's new radio analyst, he jumped at the chance. I bring a love for the program to the booth. It's not just a job for me. It's, it's, it's really a place that I love. Today, I think everyone has to get it going, and we have to get it going early. Coach Aarons would always say, let's start fast and finish strong. I know that Harry is going to take care of me. He and Chet Zakowski are both going to take care of me. Now, I guess we're, uh, <laughs> I guess we're colleagues. I don't, know what to, I don't know what to call it. I still look at them the same way. I still look, look up to both of them. Um, and it's, it's, it's pretty strange for me to now be in the booth with them and, and get a chance to just talk about something that I love along with people that I know love the program as well. He also has the ability now to reflect on seeing a, a back do something uh, and saying, you know, if he had done maybe this, uh, that's something he's going to learn to improve. So he brings that personal experience, uh, the, the ability to kind of uh, translate it into common folk language in the booth, and he does a pretty good job of that. For Palmer, it's great to be home. And every opportunity he has to call a game is sure to bring back memories of days past. But as time goes on, it becomes someone else's turn to have their moment in the sun. Come on, Birch, you gotta get off blocks. You gotta get off. It's not even, I'm trying to, you have to. And now he devotes much of his life to helping develop those moments and imparting his love for football onto the next generation of kids, no matter the talent level, skill set, or background. And I like the opportunity to maybe be around when they enjoy football the way in which I enjoy football. The majority of these kids aren't going to play Division I football, but all of them can enjoy themselves the way in which I enjoyed myself. And I, there's times where I've sat on the bench and I've enjoyed myself, and there's times where I've played the whole damn game and I've enjoyed myself. I've gone from one extreme to the other. But you can always enjoy yourself. You can always build such incredible memories and friendships from this stuff. It's, it's absolutely amazing. It's been 31 years since Wayne Harden last graced the sidelines as head coach of Temple Football. But few days have gone by since where his influence wasn't felt by someone in the Temple family. He treated you like a man and he expected you to act that way. And, you know, because he believed in all of us, you know, it made us want to be that much better, you know, and sort of inspired us on to, to bigger and better things. The thing that I have always enjoyed coaching, no matter where I've been, are the kids. I mean, uh, I was very fortunate. I always felt that I had the top 10% of the kids in the country. <laughs> and uh, they gave you everything they had. And that's, uh, that's the type of thing that, uh, that I wanted to do and set out to do is to help kids. Harden's quarterback, Steve Joachim, didn't start his playing career at Temple, but once he made the trip across the state from Happy Valley, it didn't take him long to get a sense that Harden was a Hall of Fame coach. He just had a feel for how to break down a team, the other team, and, and identify their weaknesses, and then use his players to, to make the most of that. And uh, it was interesting over the course of a couple years playing for him, every game he'd come up with another 
they weren't necessarily gimmicks, but there were changes in, in a nuance of a play that would make it work against that team. Temple football under Wayne Harden has always been an exciting, wide open happening. Pro scouts state that a Harden coach team is a constant threat due to a well-conceived, dangerous, and unpredictable passing attack. Harden's credentials more than speak for themselves. He guided the careers of two Heisman Trophy winners at Navy. He's Temple's all-time winningest coach. He led the Owls to their first ever bowl victory in 1979's Garden State Bowl, and he served as Temple's coach longer than anyone in school history. But he doesn't like to talk about his accolades, so his players do that for him. Just getting Temple on the map and building them, when you think about it, uh, 74, 75 and 76, we went nine and one and eight and two those two years and didn't go to a bowl game because there was what? Oh, back then there was only, I think, four or five bowl games. That's all there were. And we weren't in a major conference, so uh, we didn't get to a bowl game. But really making Temple uh, a factor in Division I football is, is really his greatest legacy, I think. More than three decades after his final game, Harden's kids have returned to Temple as men, gathering in the Mitch and Deborah Sunken Special Events Room in Edberg Olson Hall pay tribute to their mentor as he prepares for perhaps the greatest honor of his life. And the guys that played under him, which is evident in this room, are honored to be here today for the reasons and those lessons that he gave them to take through life. And he did. Coach, thanks for that. It's just my honor to be here today uh, and the coach is being honored by the National Football Foundation and that we're able to name this great facility uh, after him, Coach Hart. We have chosen every year since 1951 a select group of Hall of Fame members, players and coaches. In 144 years that college football has been played, perhaps something close to five million men have participated as either players or coaches, five million. In the College Hall of Fame right now, there are less than a thousand. Of the tens of thousands of coaches, only 202 of them are in the College Hall of Fame. And Temple can lay claim now to three of those. On behalf of the National Football Foundation College Hall of Fame, I want to offer our congratulations to Temple University for this addition to your long and rich tradition of excellence in football, and to Coach Wayne Hart for becoming a part of that pantheon of the greatest who ever played and ever coached what we believe is the greatest game. Coach, congratulations. Getting into the Hall of Fame is just uh, something I didn't set out to do or something I didn't expect. And uh, the greatest thing it means to me right now is the fact that uh, the kids can say they played and made a Hall of Fame coach out of me. <laughs> On December 10th, Harden will join the ranks of names like Bryant, Bowden, Hayes, and Holtz, and so many more who have changed the game. And he'll join Pop Warner and Ray Morrison to become the third Temple coach in such elite company. But when he travels to New York to accept his induction, he won't be going alone. I have a coin that, uh, that I have for, uh, made up for all the kids that I've coached, I've coached down through time. And it's uh, got my name, Wayne Harden, and, and Hall of Fame on it. And uh, on the back of it, it's got, you made it happen. And every kid that has one of those 
is uh, I'm happy for them because when I get inducted on December the 10th, everyone that has one of these is going to be inducted with me. <laughs>